My name is Corey Langford. Um, this is my build, the, the Rebel Alliance Space Station. So what I kind of built here is something based on the um, idea that that some of these people in Star Wars would need some kind of backup. So this particular vessel is something in which um, they would use for logistical support. So if you take a look at the bottom, I have some of the ships that you may see around it. Um, this right ship right here would actually dock to the rings here. Um, up here a little bit further, you have all the engines that um, actually spin and move. So all the engines to actually propel the, the piece of it. Wow. And all of these rotate. And then the other thing, this right here, this ring right here is what like kind of a directional ring. So if the space station, if you can imagine it, it would actually need to spin on a 360. So these would be like the engines that would be used to spin it 360. If you take a look inside of this particular ring, you'll see this, the power station. You'll see the, um, the red power orbs inside of it to actually power the, the, the deal. And then one section up is the living quarters. All the living quarters have beds, they have a sink, they have a shelf, they have everything you could possibly need, and there's a person in every one with lights. Then one up is the fuel tanks. The fuel tanks are some um, actually Lego X-Pods, which is I think kind of a neat part use, and they all have the trans, the trans yellow, um, neon yellow um, lights in them to look like fuel, and you can see the fuel lines running up past there. And then what the idea is, is that a ship would dock here and then these lines right here would come out and actually refuel these ships. So kind of the idea behind that. And then finally, you have the, um, the, the layers above, which is kind of the central hub. And inside of each of the hub is kind of all the repair craft and all the pieces and parts to repair any ship that may happen. So all the doors actually open on every one of them. So you can actually take a look inside. And then you see you'll have all the kind of the idea behind it is you have your, your mechanics and your mechs and all your equipment and things like that and crates for them to be able to take and, and repair with. And then on the very top is the actual command center with all the different parts, the, all the people in there and all the computers and all the, all the pieces and things that they use to control this entire massive structure. <laughs> Yeah, this is insane. Do you know how tall the whole build is? It's a little over nine feet. <laughs> yeah, and much more fun to build than it was to transport here. Um, but it, a lot, a lot of fun. A lot of fun to do and build. Um, I always get asked how many pieces, and my answer is yeah. <laughs> because I, <laughs> I lost count right about here. <laughs> right about here as I started building up. I lost count somewhere in that deal. Um, but yeah, and the other question that you always get asked is, is it glued? No, it's not glued. No craggle. So, um, have yeah. there been any major incidents as you were working on it? Obviously, oh, it's it's yeah, not yeah. a real you know wide base here. Right. So um, the biggest the biggest thing about it is I started on this in November. So a lot of people think, oh, you started in November and you built the whole thing and and it's just kind of finished. But the idea that you really have to remember is I built this in November, and this right here was built in more like December or January. So when I got here. I hadn't seen how this hooked up since January. So I got here and I started putting it together and I thought to myself, I don't remember how to hook this up. So I had to play with it for a little while to actually get it hooked up. And then, um, and then one, and then like one piece up here kind of fell off and it hit something on the way down. And I was like, uh, and you know, it's not a big deal, easy fix, but it's just one of those deals when you're building something this tall and it's kind of like the star on the Christmas tree. If, if the star falls down, it, what's it going to wreck on the way down? <laughs> Exactly. So you showed some movement earlier. Talk a little bit more about how you incorporated that into the build and how that works. So um, all of them are just kind of, this is kind of my first build with the, um, just the power functions. I just use the basic remote and two channels. So the bottom channel actually controls the, um, it controls the base ones. And then um, the top channel controls the top ones. So I kind of just did that, based it on that, and then um, the battery boxes are actually hidden inside of one of these panels. So the panels pop off and the battery boxes are right inside. So I didn't want anything, you know, to be seen or anything like that. So I just kind of hid them inside there. And then, um, then after that, it was just some LED lights behind some of the red orbs and inside of, the, inside of every one of the builds. Mm -hmm. And if you can, talk a little bit more about the main structure. I think you've got an example here of some right. of the pieces you so used. This right here was the main structure that I kind of based all of this off of. And then the big piece on this was after the rod went through here and you kind of made sure that you put something in place so it doesn't wiggle, it's how do you hook it to, you know, the next layer up. So this is not a perfect 12 studs across. 
So what I did is I put jumper plates right here and I hooked it and the weight of this particular build will actually keep things pretty steady. Okay. So yeah, that's how I've kind of done it is just hooking those up and then just stacking the layer on top of layer. But the big deal was is is kind of one of those deals of proportion. So the, the toughest part of this build was is that you build each section separately and then you bring it and you set it on top of the next one. Well, what I had happen was is that I would go and I would build a section and I would come and I would set it on top and then I would say, hey, and I'd be talking to my girlfriend and said, hey babe, come take a look at this and see what you think. And she would roll her, she'd roll in there and she'd look and she'd say, it too, it's too wide. It's out of proportion. And I'm like, ah, oh, yes, you're right, it is. So then I'd have to shorten things up or change them up because the idea was is to build it all in kind of proportion and look. So that was one of the tougher parts of the build and just making sure that everything kind of had a good proportion to it, that it doesn't look like a pencil the whole way up. Right. So you want everything to kind of flow and look like it naturally and organically belongs to the build. Yeah. And as part of that planning, do you kind of do drawings or sketches or that sort of thing? Or is it pretty much just kind of build as you go up? Build as you go. That's okay. that's kind of my style is build as you go. You know, um, I didn't use the, any of the L draws or anything like that to, to, to concept it out. I will tell you that if I would have drawn it out, it would have looked about 10 times different than it actually <laughs> turned out looking because um, in my mind, I had something completely different. And as I started building, I said, you know, I really want to add living quarters. I, hey, I really want to add fuel tanks. So it would have been completely different if I would have drawn it out. So I kind of just take it level by level and start adding to it and then you know at about the time I finish I think of something else that I wanted to add to it so if I ever add on to it or build something else I'm sure it'll change from year to year as I start thinking of more things to add to it or just kind of detailing on it. Yeah. Well it's a great build thanks so much for bringing the whole thing out to Brick Fiesta here and appreciate you chatting with me. Thank, Thank you. you so much.